Uh, my interest in uh, Judaism flourished in the college years. And at the same time, we were exposed to the ideas of overpopulation and uh, pollution clusters and environmental health. And as the implications of our unsustainable life cycle really built, um, I noticed that um, the demand, the urgency became greater to respond as a collective. And the whole idea that it was a collective and that we needed to respond collectively, that came upon me uh, with the climate change. This is one big enemy that we can't face alone and we must face it together so the universalism of that has really always been part of the way I came to Judaism so um, the context and the urgency and the manifestations of the problem has changed but they've been linked from the beginning. There are many elements to environmentalism many see it as a, as a secular issue mm -hmm. um, what does religion and spirituality bring to the table what's unique about its contribution? There are a few things that are very important, but I think the deepest root of what's important is that um, if our faith is illuminated by environmentalism or the issues of environmentalism and vice versa, that we are actually called to bring a new vision of the human project to our world. We're called to do that. And it actually feels really good to do that. It makes our faith really living and helps us address real things. Uh, there's a passion in that recreativity that is called for. But it has to be, I think, that it has to be rooted in a, in a spiritual framework because it does provide a challenge and an ennobling um, journey for us as we work together to solve problems. So when the scientists and the politicians are sitting around the table thrashing out climate change issues, and into the room comes the religious. Right. What uniquely can they say to the other two? Well, it would be the two spellings of prophet, I think. <laughs> I think that I would say as a person of faith that there is a value system that is about a different bottom line. And I would try to speak from that in a very uh, grounded, not a preachy way, but a grounded way. Um, I think we're all in pain around some of the economies and the kinds of pollution sources that we're addicted to. I think we're in pain about that. So I want to reclaim a deeper healing, and I hope I bring an inclusiveness as I bring that voice to the dialogue with science and politics. And in what way, perhaps, has environmentalism colored and focused your faith? It's given roots and grounding to my faith when I speak about my ancestors and their journey through the different bioregions that they have lived in, I reclaim something more and deeper about my own tradition. I understand my own rituals even in a deeper way when I understand that they are actually expressions of a relationship with a people living in a certain place. When we use the language of being a steward of creation, we're harking back to the language of Adam and Eve and the language of the garden. How that's lived for us in practical ways, I think the most useful thing I could say is that we're sort of responsible for our little area, our little corner of things. And sometimes our efforts are going to be small, and they're going to be right in that area. Uh, how do I shop? What do I make for dinner? Uh, what do I say to my children about a buying decision? Um, so to be a steward is to express the consciousness that we bring to the different dimensions of the life that we're really in. Judaism, when I uh, look into it with my green eyes, um, brings a lot of really practical uh, and balancing ways of having a dialogue. Uh, I think as a religion, we're pretty, uh, we have our warp and our weft, you know, we have our bi-directionality where the sacralizing acts, uh, the commandments that we take on, are meant to sort of bring spirit into the world. So that sort of vision about practically how we behave really is, is a thing that contains uh, a possibility of holiness. That's, that's a big idea. And another uh, lovely idea that I would love to share with the world community, and I'm practicing it myself in deeper ways now, is Sabbath, is extended periods of rest. That is a big rebalancing. What can we do? Uh, feel more. What we can do to know what our part in the repair is, is to feel more. Where we feel joy and where we feel deadened. And find out what's in the way 
and move towards joy, move towards life. That's how we get sent on our mission by the Creator. In Copenhagen, there was a very uh, cohesive connection between the faith leaders that were there. There was a deep sense of um, fellowship and uh, common values isn't really a strong enough of a word, a common vision and intent. And I think people have come away with a renewed strength and passion for the work, a sense of urgency. And um, the work itself, I believe, continues to get rather gummed up in the polity of it all, where there's not consensus in individual government and leadership pockets. And, and again, personally, was there something someone said or an image you, you saw of the coverage where you thought, yep, religion's right there at the heart of this, pulling it round? I think the biggest takeaway from Copenhagen that, um, that I could sense from the dialogue that I heard about it was the absolute unity of the faith vibration there. There was something really shared that was really very wide. And that is powerful and it's nourishing. It's going to hold people up for some of the, uh, the nitty gritty work ahead. Many people thought Copenhagen was a tragic failure. So what's your biggest fear? What I fear uh, about climate change impact uh, actually is already underway. Um, I see some of the migration of populations, species, humans and otherwise, um, as well underway. Uh, death and serious transformation of so many uh, tree species, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The, the consequences are already with us. And what I fear is that we won't understand them in their right context in time to plant enough seeds of vibrancy and local sustainability within human communities. Oh, my biggest hope vis-a-vis uh, -vis climate change action is that it feels wonderful to build communities, to work together on something that people care about and that they understand is immediately nourishing and sustaining to them. The creativity in that, the new relationships, the new learning is so joyful that I think when we get through our grief about, oh, I can't really eat peaches year round <laughs> if I'm really going to do this, I think we'll be more and better rewarded by tasting each other's new seasonal recipes. <laughs> when I think about uh, my safe home and creation, I think about my body. And I think about becoming aware of the tensions in my body, uh, the musculature patterns, how certain thoughts bring relaxation or fullness or tension, holding, awareness. If I can just stay with that awareness for a moment, um, the ideas let loose a little bit and I come more and more into the moment. So it's really my body as the reference point for how is it to be alive right now? That's, that's really where I go for my presence. Just take a moment in this moment, in this garden. What, what do you pick up in the stillness of this garden? What I'm touched by today is there's mamish green. There's a little bit of real green here in Hartford, where I came from this morning. It's, we don't have so much green yet. And it's um, a teacher again that, um, that life and death is existing within us and amongst us, all around us. When I think about a minute, that brings me to a point of uh, reconciliation or peace. What I come to is that I must have absolute compassion for myself, for all the brokenness, for all the limitations, and know that my enemy, my other, my co-religionist, my different religionist, that each of us needs the same gentleness to accept who we fully are, and then we can stop hating each other for our own deficiencies. I refer very frequently to um, spiritual presence. I try to return to it often, but perhaps it's best to say the first time that I really noticed what I call my right size in the universe. And uh, I was 14, I find out that it's a time of awakening for many things. And I actually was lying on the ground during the Pleiades uh, star, uh, storm, the co comets in the fall, in the late summer. And at that moment, I felt so small and so big 
and so connected all at the same time. And I knew that that was true. And that was the beginning of my being able to recognize things that are true, that are really true. So that was my beginning.